Let's now have another one of our super general discussions and talk about the identity transformation and its component space representation without specifying what the vector space is. Except in this case, we also won't specify any special properties of the basis. We'll consider a completely arbitrary basis because, as we're about to discover, the matrix representation of the identity transformation is the same regardless of our choice of basis. Now, why is that? Well, it's because the identity transformation leaves all vectors unchanged. So we can take the eigenvalue perspective on the whole thing and describe that property as every vector being the eig an eigenvector of this transformation with one, the corresponding eigenvalue. So even though we said that our basis is completely arbitrary because of this unique property of the identity transformation, any arbitrary basis is actually an eigenbasis of this transformation, right? So the resulting matrix will be a diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues on the diagonal. And because all of the eigenvalues equal one, this will be the identity matrix. So that's one explanation. Uh, according to this explanation, we're treating this problem as a special case of a more general discussion that we just had. But we can take a completely different perspective, ignore the eigenvalue issues completely, and just use the property of the identity transformation directly. And if we use our algorithm for constructing this basis, we have to apply the identity transformation to B1, which of course equals B1, and then take this result and decompose it with respect to the same basis. And because this vector is one of these vectors, the corresponding coefficient is one, and the rest are all zeros. So we have one, zero, zero, however many, however many zeros. And in the case of the second vector, we'll get i of b2 equals b2, and the coefficients will be zero, one, and the rest are all zeros. Zero, one, and the rest are all zeros. And of course, it'll be the same for all of them. And for the last one, we'll get a few zeros and then one at the end, because i of b sub n equals b sub n. So even though we're saying that we're ignoring the eigenvalue structure, the argument is basically the same as it was in the case of the eigenbasis, except that we were able to have this entire second part of the discussion without using the term eigenvalue and eigenvector. So regardless of our choice of basis, the result it's the identity matrix. And there's just one more note that we can make about this. That yes, what we just saw is that the identity transformation is represented by the identity matrix, but the converse is also true. Any transformation that's represented by the identity matrix must be the identity transformation. Why? Because if we think about what happens in component space, whatever is the input to this matrix under multiplication, that vector will remain unchanged when multiplied by this matrix. Because after all, i times any vector of components v would result in v. That's the main property of the identity matrix, that it's definitive property. So in component space, whatever the input set of components is, that's the output set of the components. So if we now take that and bring it back to the real world, we'll see that whatever linear transformation this matrix represents must have the property that whatever is the input vector, that's the output vector as well. So every vector is left unchanged. So the identity transformation is represented by this matrix, and that's the only transformation that's represented by this matrix. So this is actually a simple explanation for the fact that for an arbitrary linear transformation, the eigenbasis really delivers the simplest possible matrix. Remember, we had that whole discussion in which we argued that the eigenbasis, which results in the diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues on the diagonal. Now, I'm no longer talking about the identity transformation, but about an arbitrary transformation T. Choose an eigenbasis, decompose, uh, represent the linear transformation with respect to that eigenbasis, and we get a diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues on the diagonal. And the question was, well, could we come up with an even nicer basis so that the resulting matrix is even simpler, not just diagonal, but the identity matrix. And back then, 
we gave a very nice argument that was based on eigenvalues and eigenvectors. But later, as I was re-watching that video, or watching that video, I realized that this is actually a much simpler argument. The argument that we just gave in this video proves the same thing, but is much simpler. And the argument is, well, had there been a basis like that, and had the result somehow been the identity matrix, well, that would imply that the transformation we started out with is the identity transformation, which is not the case for the linear transformation T. So no matter what, any linear transformation other than the identity cannot be represented by the identity matrix. So an eigenbasis does deliver what, from a certain point of view, is the simplest possible matrix, a diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues on the diagonal. So there we go. That's it for component space representation of the identity transformation.